In North Carolina, you can build without a permit if no dimension is greater than 12 feet. So I designed this micro hut from the outside in. It is exactly 12 feet by 12 feet with 12 feet studs on the south wall. It's framed with two by six um, studs. All wood comes from trees that my friends and I kill. <laughs> These are piles of saw logs from the four and a half acre farm field clearing uh, across the road from the micro hut um, that had been a farm 75 years previously but had been abandoned and grown back up in forest. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Two Towers, the Tolkien trilogy, where the orakai are pushing whole trees over, root balls and all. That's how we did it. <laughs> Instead, we used track hose. The track hose would rip at the roots of the base of the tree and then lift the bucket up against the trunk and rip. <laughs> Total and complete ecological brutality. But then a new ecology emerged. We manured and amended the soil planted a cover crop and turned it in, and then planted this pasture. This is just a little over a year after the initial clearing. All the stumps and brush were pushed toward the edges of the field so no erosion will ever leave. We rotate Icelandic sheep through the field, followed by heritage turkeys. Note our two-story barn, second floor of which is filled with finished lumber, floorboards, ceiling boards, surfaced four side boards for making trim or cabinets, anything you want to build. Now, Earth Haven is completely off the grid. That means all of our buildings are off the grid, which means our construction sites are off the grid. If you want to build with power tools, and we do, then you've got to make your own power. This is what we call the Road Warrior. It is a solar power plant and tool shed all in one on wheels. This is Brian Love and I in the back of the Road Warrior after a long day. Brian is the co-conspirator behind the Road Warrior and the Gateway Farm Clearing. We have 700 watts of solar panels, 800 pound lead acid battery, and an inverter to make AC power to run chop saws, table saws, compressors, everything we need to build a home start to finish. This is back at the micro house, micro hut. A tiny little utility room, outdoor shower, propane tanks. They are for cooking and for hot water heating. Um, one day I'll put shelves here for storage. In the utility room is an on-demand hot water heater, um, which is um, that provides hot water for the kitchen sink, the outdoor shower, and I can also pump hot water through the floor for radiant floor heating uh, for long stretches of cloudy weather. This is the condenser for my fridge, which I ripped off and put back here so it keeps my plumbing from freezing instead of fighting the fridge all the time. Why are fridges? <laughs> um, this is an exterior shower with a frost-proof valve system. This is also my toilet area. I have a couple five-gallon buckets there, one with sawdust and one with a luggable loo. It's like a toilet seat. You just put it right on top of a five-gallon bucket. It's great. You just regularly empty that in a humanure pile, you're free. <laughs> this is the floor plan. You got a small utility room, the shower in the back. On the south, this is the front door. Inside, you have the entry room. This is the office. This is the kitchen. This is the library. This is the living room, also the guest bedroom. This is the double futon couch that pulls out. And then the spiral ladder up to the master suite, all on 11 by 11 feet. This is inside. We have the range where I can cook a small turkey. Very important. Under the counter fridge, plenty, Lazy Susan, plenty of kitchen cabinet space. This is the spiral ladder going up to the master suite um, with an extra deep stair for putting your dirty dishes. Don't want to take up valuable counter space. Looking through the spiral ladder, this is the office. Uh, I don't know if you can see that picture. Um, a desk with drawers on both sides, file cabinet, and then looking out the glass, you're looking at the farm field across the road and down below, so keep your eye on the turkeys and the sheep. Make sure you stay in line. Um, and then in the corner, we have the entry room, and this is the living room and guest bedroom. You can see some earthen plaster. I realized in designing the micro hut that every object and function in a house requires dead space. Uh, a countertop and a desk, you have to have dead space in front of it so you can work at it. A stairway or a door requires dead space in front of it so you can move through. So in the micro hut, every function is arranged around the outside wall and they share one common dead space right in the middle of the space. This is my library. And in the library, uh, you can see here is the bridge, kind of like central command for the micro hut. 
In the central command, I have a car stereo. I have built-in car <laughs> stereo speakers in the corner of the room. Uh, indoor outdoor thermometer, I know what's going on. Uh, this is a timer switch, which runs my radiant floor. That's the way you want to do it in the passive solar house. And then I have battery meters, so I know what's going on with the um, solar power system in the neighborhood and in, in this exact structure. We've just gone up the spiral ladder, and we're in the master suite. So this is a passive solar house. What I mean by that is that it's so well insulated and there's enough mass inside the insulation envelope that if it was in the teens last night, as long as it was sunny the day before, in the morning it will be in the upper 60s without any additional heat. This is looking the other way. Uh, and conversely, I have the overhangs designed so that in the summer, um, when the sun tracks a very high angle in the sky, there's no direct sun hitting any of the glass on my south wall, thereby preventing um, overheating. Now, for the cost of less what many people today spend on a new car, you can um, build a perfectly comfortable passive solar micro house, which is gonna last for centuries. I believe that our culture is lacking common sense because we no longer sense the source of our life in common. So that's why I wanted to clear my own farm field so I could sense the source of my life more clearly. This is a white oak tree in 1910 in West Virginia. The eastern forest used to be filled with trees this big, no longer. I dream of a world where eastern forests have trees this big all the time. To do that, we're gonna have to re-inhabit rural America, and to do that, micro-huts for the people. <laughs>